Welcome to Mainly Facts Weekly Compilation. Discover captivating stories, astounding facts, and forgotten histories. Subscribe and enable notifications to stay updated with our videos. Whether for chores or simply seeking something intriguing, our content is perfect for you. Let's dive in. What is the stupidest reason that someone hates you? Oh man, you want some stupid reasons for someone to hate you? Just read some of the nastier comments I get in some of these videos. But honestly, I want you folks to know, I read those and I'll laugh about them because I'm still watching the video, I still got you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think many of you hate me. Honestly, so many of your comments are so positive and awesome. It really, really kind of makes my day, so... I don't, I, I can't read all of them, there's so many, but you folks are awesome, so I don't hate you. Story one! My best friend's brother-in-law wants to kill me, and I've never really spoken to him. I've been friends with this guy for 30 plus years. We were from a small town and did everything together. When we were in high school, we delivered pizzas for the same restaurant. His sister gets a job there as a waitress, and we all work there together for about seven months until my friend and I graduate high school. At this point, I go away to college and move away for seven years, coming back occasionally to visit my parents. My friend and I would usually get together and hang out on these visits. I would never see my sister. When I returned, I was invited to a barbecue at his parents' house. His sister and her husband lived with his parents with their two children. I met with his family, but the brother-in-law was at work. At some point, his sister admitted that she had a crush on me and when we all worked together. My friend had a sports car and I had an old Jeep. One weekend, he wanted to go camping, so we switched cars so he could go up into the mountains. He came and got my car and went back to his parents' house to pick up his camping gear. His sister's husband came home while he was there and came rushing into the house thinking I was there with his wife. <laughs> this man has hated me ever since that barbecue and has never spoken to me. He leaves the room or the building when I'm at a function where he's in attendance. He glares at me in the grocery store and left a rodeo with his whole family when my family showed up. Too long didn't read. My best friend's brother-in-law hates me because of insecure dreams he had even though we've never spoken. I have a guy like this. Girl was my best friend since we were 13. Lost touch for a while until we ran into each other while I was security at a mall. Apparently, she had told him that she had a major crush on me during our teen years together. I did, too, but we never told each other. And then, randomly, we reconnected. We talk occasionally, but he's scared crapless of me, even though I never do anything with her while they're together. I take it as a compliment. I... I can't wrap my head around people who are like this and are this jealous. Like, you have to be so insecure in your relationship. And if you're that insecure in your relationship, I feel like there, there are problems that need to get sorted out. Like, maybe you need to go to therapy and, you know, work on your confidence, or maybe there's something wrong with the relationship. I don't know, but I just, I don't get that kind of wild jealousy. But, uh, I don't know, I'm just a chill, laid-back dude. Know what I'm saying? What am I doing? Story two. Someone hates me because they think I'm gay. What's even weirder is that they continuously stare at me at school. If I ask why, he says, cause you're gay, mate. I think someone has a man crush on me. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like my high school back in the day. Some dude used to stare at me while he walked across the cafeteria. Keep in mind, he's super tall, built, cowboy looking dude. He even had the plaid, boots, and hat. He said I was gay and would stare me down every day. I never saw hate in his eyes, yet he claimed he hated me. Years later, the dude came out. I haven't talked to him since, but if I ever do, I don't think I'll be able to keep a straight face. Pun not intended, but I'll keep it. Uh, you were just a mirror reflecting his own gay back at him, and every time he saw you, he was completely hypnotized by his total gayness and unwillingness to accept it. As someone who is a little bit older and uh, grew up in a smaller town that was uh, a little more uh, conservative, um, yeah, no, I get this. I had people who would be mad at me thinking that I was gay or something, and I'm very proudly pansexual now, but I was very repressed uh, back then. 
Um, but yeah, for some of those people, it is absolutely them repressing something that they are ashamed of in themselves, which is unfortunate. And I hope those people can, you know, get over that and accept themselves. And then there's some people who are just like that because of their beliefs or whatever. And uh, they just, they love being hateful pieces of crap. And to those people, um, I, 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 hope, I hope you all eat rocks. Uh, you know, why would you ever hate someone over that kind of stuff? You're just awful. Don't be like that. Story three. I have two. I rejected this girl because I was already in a steady relationship with someone else, and she knew that. She made vlogs at the time, and then went on a rampage in one of her videos stating I was the only guy she ever loved and that I crushed her heart. My girlfriend's parents kicked me out of their house because if anything happens in their home, they instantly blame me for the incident, even if it was not possible for me to do it. What pushed them over the limit was I was at a buddy's house and he lives down the street. I came back to my girlfriend's to grab a drink and they saw me run in and run out. They ended up freaking the F out on my girlfriend about it. All over a Pepsi. Story 4. My ex-best friend hates me because she was cheating on her boyfriend and I called her out on it. She wasn't even trying to hide it. She would cheat on him publicly. It's not like it was some big secret. Story 5. I blocked someone on Twitter once because I was just tired of seeing their crap all the time and their constant tweeting every minute. They spread rumors about me at school that were absurd that nobody believed and he just made himself look like a huge jerk. It was the dumbest thing I've ever been a part of. But somebody hates me because I blocked them on Twitter. If you're going to get all upset about that, then you definitely have your priorities straight. I mean, to be fair, you went for the full block instead of muting? Oh, shame on you. Honestly, I, I, I mute and block people on Twitter without hesitation all the time because that site is rough. That site's a lot. And uh, you know what? I'm there to be happy and uh, keep in touch with some friends and stuff. And by golly, if I don't like what you're throwing down, I, I don't have to deal with it. Too bad. Story 6. My boyfriend's parents hate me because he chooses to live with me instead of with them. He's 30. You monster. How could you steal away their little baby boy like that? Are they Italian? Story 7. Had a coworker verbally chew me out because I pulled out in front of him, cut him off, and made him slam on his brakes to narrowly avoid me in my white grand dam. After explaining to him that I do not own a white grand dam and also showing him my black Mitsubishi Eclipse, he still refuses to accept that it was not me that did it. Still hates me for it, too. And it's hard, I'm sure he acknowledges the truth. He's probably just one of those people who can never back down from anything ever because he is afraid he'll look silly when in reality everyone just thinks he's nuts, to put it succinctly. Story 8. Because I dance better than him. He even tried to fight me. He's no friend of yours. Oh man, where is my hat? God, I hate being a man without a hat. Hmm. Story 9. Ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend beat the crap out of her. I talked her through the steps she needed to take to protect herself and got him arrested. Now he and his friends hate me because I got him on probation and all he did was split a girl's eyebrow open. I'm such an a-hole. You totally overreacted. I'm not going to do a Puerto Rican accent. You got to mind your own business, bro. Story 10. Because we disagreed on the internet. You should have made that emoticon face the other way, you see nugget I hate you! Using all caps. Story 11. Because I told her she has a booger on her nose, 6th grade. B, I'm doing you a favor. I could have left you looking like an idiot with it poking out, but I didn't. She having cried over it. Tears, man, tears. Because of you, it came into existence. Story 12. My aunt hates me because I was born on the same day as her. How dare you be born on the same day as your aunt? You would take that from her? You should have you should have stopped. You should have waited. You were coming on out. You put hands to the side and you just, oh, no, not yet. Oh, shit, it's same birthday. No, there can be only one.
Story 13. I couldn't control a football smashed at me four feet in the air. A. Neither can you. B. I am a goalkeeper. This is generally unnecessary. C. F you. I'm helping out your team because your usual keeper is ill. Unless they're six foot four and built like the Hulk, I doubt they could do any better. Hulk is a winger anyway. Men who are in traditional female positions, i.e. elementary teacher, nurse, S-A-H-D, what are some of the reactions commonly associated with your profession and S? Ah, oh, man. Men not conforming to typical gender stereotypes? Wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Whatever. I... People should do what they want and do the jobs they want, and I'm interested to uh, hear how these folks are dealing with it. So let's go. Story one. I'm a male teacher at a child development center, one year through pre-K, and I have parents who give me a hard time slash harass me weekly. All of the parents who have been there longer than a few months love me, especially parents of boys who don't have adult males in their life. It's for low-income families. But the new parents always hate me for being a male teacher. I had a dad question me on how I am in charge of a classroom. What do you do when a child needs their diaper changed? You're telling me they let man teachers change little girl diapers? This dude skipped going to work and watched me for an hour, even watching over me changing his son's diaper to see if I'm a pervert or not. My aide actually left because she couldn't handle it professionally and almost told him off. He left before my boss showed up to help, but in the evening she told me he needs to register as a volunteer and do a background check if he stays more than 10 minutes. About six months later, he apologized and said he was glad to see I'm still there. I could fill a book with all of the times I faced discrimination for being the only male at work, but this guy sums it up pretty well. Males are pedophiles and perverts until proven otherwise in our society. At least he apologized later on. A lot of parents seem to just stick to their guns. This is pretty sad to hear, and yeah, you don't see a lot of male teachers uh, below, like, middle school. I think you see some. I had, uh, I had one male teacher in elementary school, and that was sixth grade. Um, and I think there was one more in my entire elementary school. Um, but, you know, I think that's something that should change, and I'm glad to hear that you're doing well and well-liked. Story 2 Years ago, I was hired to be a personal trainer at a gym, but it just happened that the girl who worked at the daycare quit that same day. So I agreed to fill the position until they hired another daycare person. At first, the mothers who brought their kids in were like deer in headlights when they saw me in there. Most of them asked questions about if I was qualified or understood how to act with kids, and all of them made a point to stop their workouts periodically to make sure I hadn't, like, set their kids on fire or something. I'd probably be more offended if it weren't for the fact that I really didn't know much about kids, but fast forward a week into the job and they all friggin' loved me! I gave the best mother effin' airplane rides that very few girls could compete with. Once they saw that the kids really looked forward to hanging out with me there, their mothers relaxed and even asked for my schedule so their kids could visit me while they worked out. The only real downside was the fact that I ended up being good at the daycare meant that the boss neglected to find a replacement, and I never got to do any personal training at that job. <laughs> I mean, cool, I'm glad that you did good at that job, but it does suck that you missed out on doing the job that you actually wanted to do there. Uh, that is unfair in its own way. Story 3 I've been a stay-at-home dad for a few years now. When I first started, my girls were still pretty young. They were about five, three, and one and a half years old. I can't remember how many times women made comments or did that passive-aggressive thing where they ask a child who can't speak well yet a rhetorical question aimed at me. Oh dear, where are your shoes? Did daddy forget to put shoes on you? It's summer, lady. She's in a stroller. Or things like exiting the grocery store and an older lady comes up to me while I'm getting my girls to hold hands and look for cars in the lot. Are you okay? Do you need some help? I wasn't upset or yelling at them. I didn't look stressed out and about to lose it with my kids, but the tone of voice is the killer in these situations. It's pure condescension. You know, the voice is in the upper register with a big fake smile, drawing out the words, all sing-song-like. This is the female version of mansplaining. I call it being an asshole. The moms that I'm around on a regular basis are all cool and don't do it, but it used to happen quite a bit. 
It must be that women think men can't adequately care for small children and babies. They feel like the subject matter experts and will insert their snide questions and comments to try and make someone feel inadequate or like they aren't doing a good job parenting. Basic butt moms. People regularly ask me if I'm babysitting or playing Mr. Mom just because I'm with my kids during the daytime. No, I'm just a dad doing dad things. <sighs> you know, when you see threads like this, stay at home dads always seem to get a bad rap. And that sucks, because there are so many great dads out there. My dad, like, I didn't live with him most of my life growing up. He just had me on uh, Sundays every week. But man, he was amazing. My dad was such a good friggin' dad. And if anyone were ever to question him, I'd be like, back off, my dad's awesome. So yeah, stay at home dads out there. You're doing great, I hope. Story 4. Just got my BSN fresh out of nursing school. I currently work as a CNA while trying to break through to my first nursing job. My nursing class was about 65% female, 35% male, and that was considered high. A lot of people ask me when I'm going to be a doctor, or if I've ever wanted to be a doctor. I have an aunt who's a pediatrician who straight up asked me why I want to be a doctor's assistant and why I picked a girl's job. I always thought she'd be more empathetic being a woman in what's seen as a male-dominated field, but I guess not. I get a lot of questions asking why I want to be a nurse. This is usually par for the course being young and out of nursing school, but I can't help but notice I get the question more than women. I also know a lot of people are genuinely curious and don't mean anything by it, but I can't help but get defensive when it usually follows the why aren't you slash do you plan to be a doctor questions. On occasion, I get requests by patients to not be taken care of by male nursing staff, which I feel is completely understandable. I can't say I'm totally guilt-free, though. I once shadowed on a unit where all staff was required to wear the same scrubs. I approached a Filipina girl and called her nurse only for her to tell me she's the resident. Healthcare is just very entrenched in its gender roles in general, but it's slowly changing. I've been to emergency departments where the nursing staff was majority male, but you still have your completely female-dominated specialties like OB, labor, and delivery. Nowadays, you do have more men becoming nurses and women becoming doctors, which is great, but it's still going to take a while for the public view to change. Story 5. Male nurse here. More often than not, patients and family think I'm a doctor. I always get a kick out of that as I've never wanted to be a doctor. I get hit on a lot. I'm an average looking guy, but wow, some of the other female nurses I work with are very flirty. This pretty much sums up male nursing experience. However, I feel that the doctor stereotype is diminishing. At least where I am, there's tons of female doctors. I find the patients very flirty too sometimes. I mean, you knew it was going to happen in this thread. Last two stories, male nurses. As someone who was a male certified nursing assistant for a little bit, um, I didn't encounter a ton of this, but I think because a lot of CNAs in certain places kind of get more of the grunt work stuff. But uh, yeah, no, I, in my training class, very few men, and a lot of the actual nurses I met... Not a whole lot of men, but you know what? It's a great career for either gender, and there should never be any expectation that you should have to be shooting for hire. Becoming a doctor is hard. Like, becoming a nurse isn't easy, but becoming a doctor is hard. Story 6. I have a male cousin who's a preschool teacher. There was a petition going around to have him fired. He sued two people for going onto his town's forum and telling the town that he is a pedophile. Story 7. I worked at a craft store and was one of the only guys there with a mostly female customer base. While I was working the fabric cutting counter, I had a customer call a female coworker over and have her help, saying something along the lines of, at least we ladies know what we're doing. Yeah, I totally don't know a thing about fabric, despite both of my parents running an embroidery and printed apparel business, and me working at the costume shop at one of the colleges I went to. Story 8. Male elementary teacher. Last year, a mom didn't want her kid in my pre-K class because I was a guy, so they moved her. Oh well. Other than that, and some comments about how rare it is, there isn't much reaction. That's so lame. My favorite elementary teacher was male, fifth grade. Awesome guy. Had a class pet snake called Legs.
Story 9. In college, I was chapel organist for an all-girls private school, a position which has previously been held exclusively by females. The interesting reaction was that suddenly there were more girls than ever signing up for chapel choir and private organ lessons. Organ lessons? Ugh. Story 10. I'm a male preschool teacher with a big manly beard and a booming voice. I help in potties and do everything my co-teachers do and have not had one bad experience. In fact, most parents, especially boys, are ecstatic to have a male teacher in the room. One thing I have to be careful about is my tone and demeanor. I can be scary at times, I'm told. Also, I need to not get caught checking out all the attractive teachers, which is tricky. Oh boy, be careful with those other attractive teachers. Aw, oh, man. Big, burly, manly, friggin' preschool teacher. Uh, you know, I had considered going into uh, teaching when I was going to college. At first, it was going to be for uh, English education. Um, my dream was, like, high school or college level, because I don't want to read middle school writing. I, um but the other thing I thought would be fun would be, like, teaching, like, preschool or kindergarten because it would just be, like, playing with my nephews and nieces all the time. <laughs> and I think that would be great. Um, I, uh, they would not learn very much, but we would have amazing story times. Story 11. I work as an administrative secretary at a university. When I started here, a lot of the older faculty thought it was weird that a male would work as a secretary. They thought I had given up on being in upper management and settled for a lower desk job. Then they realized I was much younger than they thought and took the job for free tuition. We've got a male administration person in our department. He's a mathematician and was originally hired to do timetabling. When he isn't doing that, he does other admin stuff. Story 12. While it was temporary, I volunteered in a local primary school for a while as a teaching assistant in a department of literally about 20 females. They didn't even mention it, but the kids went berserk from excitement and all wanted to work with me more because I was a guy, so had different views of things, I guess. I'd go out on the playground and the kids started a big conga line behind me to follow me on duty. Now I'm a proper teacher in a secondary school. It's pretty good. Professors and teachers, what's the most pretentious thing you've heard a student say? You know, students, don't get too big of a head and uh, start shooting your mouth off thinking that you're hot crap because someone is inevitably going to make you look like a ding-dong. Usually that person is you. Mm. Story one! All the same student. My dad said I don't have the personality to be a nurse. I need to be a doctor. I don't have time to join any student organizations. I'm married. I'm going to make all A's this semester. Oh, that academic warning? I took care of that. She had a mediocre GPA, hadn't made good grades in science and math classes. Unless her dad built the medical school, she wasn't getting in. And that academic warning was totally legit. I spoke with her professor and he laughed for quite a while when I told him that she said she would make an A. He said she might pass with a C- minus if she was lucky. The kicker? Her husband then called our office and threatened to get us all fired for daring to tell his precious wife something she didn't want to hear. Gave us a deadline to apologize to her before he called the president of the university to file his complaint about our behavior. Looked him up on Facebook. One of many TAs is an excellent Facebook stalker one of my TAs, and he works at a local bike shop. Not even a student at our university. We turned the voicemail over to campus police, and they had a chat with him. Update. After two changes of major and three or four changes of pre-health designation, pre-med, pre-dent, pre-PA, whatever else, the student finally graduated. She's going to go to the local community college in the fall and start their respiratory therapy program. If she found her passion, then I'm happy for her. My dad said I don't have the personality to be a nurse. I need to be a doctor. Well, that one may have been her dad saying she's got a crappy personality and her not realizing it because she's not all that bright. The rest, holy crap. I just can't get over the husband calling 
and being like, how dare you speak to my precious Purim like that? You shall treat her with the utmost respect. I demand an apology before the sun sets this afternoon or we shall do pistols at dawn. Story two. Well, I'm not a teacher, but I was a student. My English teacher in grade 10 once took me aside after a class in which I had been an unbearable little crap and said to me, do you know what precocious means? Eager to show off my superior command of the language, I replied, of course, it means demonstrating extraordinary abilities at a young age. I was so god dang proud of myself having learnt the word just a few days earlier. His reaction was, I felt, a little strange. He looked at me with, with such contempt, unable to stop his face from flashing genuine disgust, and he dismissed me. We never spoke about it again. Years later, maybe a decade on, I remembered that conversation and wondered about his reaction. Why disgust, and why so visceral? Suddenly it hit me like a freaking freight train. I had misheard his question. He hadn't asked me if I knew what precocious meant. He asked me if I knew what pretentious meant, and I'd given him the most completely and utterly pretentious answer it is possible to give. It couldn't have been a more pretentious answer if I'd been wearing a beret. <laughs> I mean, I feel like the teacher should have at least had something further to say instead of just looking at you with that kind of look, but... <laughs> That does make for a pretty great story. And you seem to, you know, you seem to be self-aware enough that I don't think you are probably that pretentious. Story three. As an LMS admin, I hear all kinds of crazy stuff during grade appeals. Last semester, a couple of kids on a sports team were cheating in a class. Each of the five would take turns taking the test, first online and then in succession, so that while one may not get a great score, the rest usually did. So the instructor asks how to resolve the issue. We make the 30-question test randomized from 100-question pools. Immediately following the next test, we have a meeting with the dean. Apparently, the students felt it was unfair. Nothing happened to us or them, but the fact that they actually filed a complaint because the test couldn't be cheated on amazed me. Well, at least they understood teamwork. Story 4. My first year teaching, I subbed in a grade 10 English class. It was September, and one of the girls in the class was heavily pregnant, so would have gotten pregnant in grade 9. All they had to do in this period was write one page about themselves. Easy sub-lesson. So I'm walking around checking work and this girl and her group have done crap all. So I pop over to them and remind them they only have 20 minutes left and need to get something written on their page. Without a pause, the girl looked up at me and said, Ms. Jesus didn't write his own Bible, now did he? I just walked away. Oh... My, my dear, no. No, no, no. <laughs> um, I don't think that you want to say that, because if you, if you're a follower, if you're a Christian, that's a, that's a pretty pompous thing to be equating yourself to. I know they say to try and act Christ-like, but, uh, you might be taking it a little far there. Story 5. As a high school English teacher, I was counseling a freshman student, about 14 years old, that she should probably do some of her coursework. After all, she wouldn't want to come to her senses as a junior or senior and realize that she was a year or two behind in credits and wouldn't be able to graduate. Her response? Why should I listen to you? You make about as much as a garbage man. Lots of laughing, giving high fives to friends in class, plenty of other students to focus on in class. I just moved on to help others in class. Tough to convince a 14-year-old to think ahead. Just checked her transcript. She's about a year and a half behind in credits. It's going to be very difficult for her to graduate this year. Wow, it would take all my self-control not to respond. Yeah, and the trash they deal with doesn't talk back. Oh, this is one of the reasons why I don't think I could have been a teacher. Because if I had kids like this... Who are just like, why should I listen to you? You make as much as a garbage man. You know, I would keep an eye on those students. I would wait for them to graduate. And if I found out that they got stuck working some just crummy little dead-end job, 
I would be a regular customer, and I would I would never say anything, but I would always just smirk. And that's not healthy for either of us. That's not a good thing for a teacher to do, but I probably would. Story 6. Not personally, but while I was student teaching in a wealthy area, another teacher told me he heard a student say that their parents got them a crappy car, but it was just until they totaled it. Then, after they destroyed it and learned their lesson, they'd get a Ferrari. I don't understand how this would teach them a lesson. Crash your car faster so you get a new one, and possibly be injured and or die in the process. Story 7. From a senior who can barely read or write after I told him he needed to check his essay for spelling and grammar errors, whatever man, I'm going to come back here in five years and make way more than you. I said, considering I'm a public school teacher, I certainly hope that he'll make more than me. I'm going to be a rapper. Story 8. This is from a 16-year-old student arguing about the grade she earned on a research paper. My essay doesn't need any citations because my opinions are fact. <laughs> Holy frick, the teachers I had in school would have absolutely laughed in my face if I had said that to them, or anything remotely near that. Story 9. I gave a student a C on a philosophy paper, and she said to me, Do you know who my father is? To this day, I have no idea, but the grade didn't change. My father, the inventor of toaster strudel, will not be pleased to hear about this. Story 10. Next year, you're still going to be here BSing, and I'm going to be making it big in the real world. He got held back. He's not in my class this year. So many people underestimate the real world's ability to destroy even the most passionate, driven, and talented human beings. <sighs> to all of you who are currently in middle school, high school, whatever, and you think like, man... I got this thing down packed. The real world, I'm going to be ruling that roost. Uh, no, the real world is not fun. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. It's not the worst thing in the world. I don't want to pretend like it's hell or something like that. But uh, it's not as nice as you might think. And boy, oh boy, if you think you're big crap in high school, you're just a little turd in the real world. Parents, what's been the most what the F moment that you've witnessed with how someone interacts with your child? You know, I said it in the last video, and I'll say it again here. Adults, don't be weird around kids. Like, and just don't, okay? Be cool. Talk with other adults and leave kids alone. Um, small content warning for folks. I'm pretty certain some of these stories are going to involve some uh, borderline creepers, but hopefully nothing wildly disturbing. So uh, just do be warned. Adults be creepy, yo. Why did I say that? Story one. My daughter is my biological daughter. We are American. She was born in Atlanta, Georgia. She's now an adult. However, she and I have both been asked her entire life if she is adopted. Complete strangers, when they see her in person or in a photograph, will always ask where she is from. They never believe us, but oh well, lol. Once, when she was around 13, we were in the mall and a female employee approached us in a store and started making small talk. She then starts asking about my daughter's eth ethnicity and commenting on how exotic she looks, how beautiful she was, etc. She starts asking if my daughter was a dancer. Not sure why. My daughter says yes. Then the woman starts asking where she danced, if she has recitals. Can she come watch sometime? She says she wished she had pictures to send back home to show her relatives because she's just so beautiful. I mean, she's just staring at my daughter like she's in a trance. Then she starts touching her face and rests her hand on her shoulder. I grabbed my daughter by the hand and left. Touching my kid crosses the line. What the heck? Your daughter is beautiful? She must be adopted? Seems like such a backhanded compliment. I know that a lot of, like, older people, you know, like 70s and 80s and stuff, touching other people is a little more okay to them. Like, I grew up as a kid with adults, you know, like, oh, they'll touch all over and stuff, but that was usually, like, your grandparents and stuff. Strangers, 
just like touching kids and stuff. Don't do that. That's weird and rude and creepy. They're people. Don't. Story two. This happened to me when I was a kid. We were on our annual camping trip with my cousins at a lake we go to every year. We were ages 11, 10, and 8. While swimming by the shore, an elderly man approached us and asked if he could take some underwater photos of us. He said he was a photographer and proceeded to show us an album of all these underwater photos he took, all being young girls in bikinis. Thankfully, my dad and uncle saw the whole thing, stepped in, told him to scream, and reported him to the park ranger. None of us realized at the time that we were in potential danger and felt bad for how our dads treated the man. Looking back on it, as an adult, I realize how sinister things could have gone. Stop being creepy! Old man, if you're not a creep, why are you doing that? You have to know... Like, you would have to know if you were a normal person, like, if I asked to take underwater pictures of these boys, it's going to come off a little creepy. So either you know and you're just trying to push past it and you're a decent person who's just a little weird, or you're a creep. Either way, don't do it. Story 3. When my oldest was a few months old, my cousin came to visit. They asked whether I had started giving my daughter ice baths yet. Now, a bit of background. We are all Russian-Ukrainian immigrants, and popular in the Soviet times was the theory of Stolenia, adjusting the body to cold weather for supposed health reasons. I was subjected to it. I did not enjoy it, because I am a mammal who doesn't enjoy torture, nor do I enjoy torturing any small children, much less my own. Anyway, no, I tell my cousin, and she launches into a long explanation of how they did ice baths for their son when he was an infant, and how he hated it, and how it was good for him even though he cried. I am sure the expression I wore on my face can best be described as, what the heck? My cousin's explanation peters out as she points at her husband and yells, he made me do it. Story 4. When my oldest was about two months old, I was still on maternity leave. I had a homeless, I suspect, woman approach me and ask if she could have my baby. We were living in a not-so-great area of a suburb of Dallas, a place where we'd sometimes get homeless 40-plus-year-olds trick-or-treating by themselves on Halloween. I had just taken my baby to the doctor for a checkup. It was probably a week after I'd been cleared to drive after an emergency C-section. This crazy woman who I'd never seen on my street before and who looked and smelled like she hadn't bathed in at least a week approached me as I struggled to get the baby carrier out of the car. She said my baby was beautiful and asked if she could keep it for a while. I said no, so she asked if she could babysit. I said no thanks and made a limping break for the front door. I locked the door and called my husband for help. She hung out around the front porch for half an hour before he made it home. We moved away from that area a month later. Look, I feel really bad for homeless people, and I try to, you know, give to charities and help out in whatever ways that I can. Um, there are people who are often down on the luck, have been screwed over by society, and need a hand. That being said... It if you're trying to get people's children and stuff like that, that's, that's not okay. Like, I, I feel bad for you. I want you to get help. I do not want you to take someone's child, please. Story five. My three-year-old daughter is allergic to strawberries. <gasps> oh, my mother-in-law and aunt-in-law both know this and have been asked multiple times to not keep them where she can find them. A few weeks ago, I went to pick her up from their house, and I found her sitting at the bar eating strawberries with them. I went frigging ballistic. They said they didn't see the harm, and of course not. They weren't the ones who had to comfort her for the following 24 hours while she was covered from head to toe with hives and having explosive diarrhea. I no longer allow her to be over there unless my husband and I are there, too. I can't trust them not to do it again. First off, I feel terrible for your daughter because strawberries are just one of my favorite things. My my favorite flavor in the world is artificial strawberry. I mean, I, I, drink, I drink so many of these little bad boys and stuff, but... <sighs> 
I've seen this where there are like other people, usually older relatives, who don't treat allergies seriously. And I feel like those people need to be at least lightly smacked upside the head. Like, you don't get to decide what's serious for my child. Okay? Story six. When my son was around eight months old and I was changing him in the bathroom, a woman came out of the stall, strangely surveyed my diaper change practices, then proceeded to tell me how my son had a big penis before leaving without washing her hands. Story seven. My aunt took me and my cousin to an antique shop when I was nine and my cousin was seven. The shop owner kept saying we were pretty as peaches and ran his thumb over my cousin's mouth. I was so anxious for her, but was too scared to say anything. On the way home, my aunt called us W's. I went from wanting to punch that man to wanting to kill your aunt. My mom called me a W once because I got changed with the curtains open. I don't understand why adults think it's okay to s children like that. Story 8. I had my 11-day-old out at a restaurant for my sister's birthday. I was wearing her in a wrap. A woman came up to me, commented about the baby, and tried to lift her out of the wrap, saying, It's okay, I work at a school. No, B, it isn't okay. Breaking into someone's house? Oh, hey, it's okay, I work as a housekeeper. Story 9. Apparently, when I was a baby, a woman came up to me on a train and said hi to me and played with me for a second, then took one of my feet and put it in her mouth. Uh, my parents switched carriages after that, thank God. What the actual frick is wrong with people? Don't. Do that. Serious. What was the worst experience you had in elementary school? I gotta tell you, elementary school was, uh... Not a breeze for me. Uh, I was picked on a bit. I was the kind of, you know, geeky kid wearing button-up shirts. Cried a few times when some girls made fun of me. So I had uh, some bad experiences, but uh, nothing compared to these people. Story 1. My mother had sent me to school very sick one day, and I was having a horrible time, to say the least. Nauseous, fever, cough, but I couldn't stay home, as she had a very important job interview, so I pretended I was a lot better than I was for her. About a half hour into school, I got this feeling in the pit of my stomach. Oh, God. I proceeded to walk over to where everyone kept their backpacks, where nobody could see me, found the nearest one, and puked inside of it. I was a stupid kid, so I looked around to make sure no one saw. The storage area was around the corner from the class desks, and they were having playmat time, so nobody noticed me. And I put the poor kid's backpack back on its hook. <laughs> Two hours later during lunch, I heard a scream, followed by a couple students getting sick all over the lunchroom tables and floor, and that boy whose bag I puked in was crying his freaking eyes out. The teacher basically interrogated the class, and I finally burst into tears and admitted it was me. I was sent to the nurse, then detained, and my mother never looked so angry with me when she picked me up. As for the kid, he didn't talk to me for two weeks. Then he told me he hated me and that my puke smelled like his cat's litter box. We started dating eight years later, and we are still together. Oh, that ending went from, dang, that sucks, to, oh, yay, good for you. I mean, I'm sure that's not the day that you met him. However, uh, as far as, you know, us as the audience, uh, the, the story of your relationship, that's, that is the least cute meet cute that I've ever heard of, possibly. And I absolutely adore it. <laughs> Story two. There's one story that will always stick in my mind. I was in third grade and we were supposed to bring back signed permission slips for our trip to the library. The only person in class who didn't bring his permission slip was a friend of mine. My third grade teacher thought it to be appropriate to interrogate him in front of the entire class as to why he did not bring it back. He responded that he would be unable to attend and she continued to press him. All of a sudden, he bursts into tears and explains that he has to attend a funeral. You'd think that she'd have the brains to stop there, right? Wrong. She still has the nerve to ask, whose? And I'll never forget the look on his face when he replied, my mom's. 
friggin' hated that teacher so much for many other reasons. He moved about a week after that, and his father got in contact with our family updating on their status, which wasn't exactly great. That was my worst experience. I can't imagine how hard it must have been for him. What is wrong with that teacher? Why do elementary school teachers feel the need to, like, call kids out and embarrass them in front of the class and almost never back down? Like, certainly not all of them. I don't, not even close to the majority, just a small number. But I think we've all had that elementary teacher who was just a prick. And it's like, why are you working with kids? Uh, content warning for this story, folks. Um, this one gets pretty dark. It involves, uh, some children getting murdered. And so if you don't want to hear about that, um, I would recommend you go to the timestamp that, uh, the editor's putting right here. Scroll to that and skip this one. Story three. I grew up in Guyana, South America as a young child due to my father's job. I lived there twice, once in the Amazon rainforest with a small tribe and once in the capital, Georgetown. When I was in second grade, I was at the American school, which had a large fence all around it and a gated entrance. Once, two very poor, starving Guyanese children called out to myself and a couple of friends while we were playing at recess asking for food. We gave them some of our extra lunch from our lunch boxes, and they thanked us profusely. Then, as they turned around and walked away, an older Guyanese man shot them both in the head and stole the food before fleeing as everyone started to panic. Story 4. Okay, so my first grade teacher was a total Don head who was constantly doing things that probably should have gotten him fired, like telling the entire class that they should never be like me, and using my art project as an example of what everyone shouldn't do, singling me out, openly mocking me and my family in front of the class, forcing me to go to a kindergarten class so he could use me as a bad example there, etc. I'm almost positive he hated me. The worst thing, though, happened one day during our math time. I was in the advanced math class and had already learned what we as a class were doing on a worksheet. Because of this, I worked ahead and finished it before the other kids. This prompted him to take my sheet, scream at me for working ahead of the class slash not paying attention, violently rip up my worksheet, throw it in the garbage, and make me start over. It was more humiliating than anything up to that point and the only time I'd ever been punished for being smart. You know, I have so much respect for the teaching profession. Um, as some of you may know, I wanted to be a teacher. I went to college uh, for education for a while, never finished it. Um, but I think teachers are highly undervalued and, you know, not given the respect that they deserve a lot of time. But then you hear about crap heads like this, people who should be fired from their job. Because as a teacher, if you are going to treat a child like this, you have failed on the most core level of your job. You truly have. And so you either need to really shape up and, you know, make some course corrections, or you need to quit or get fired. Story 5. I was bullied pretty mercilessly at the hands of another kid in 7th grade. He would call me a fat F or a R. I was chubby, but actually rather intelligent in hindsight, and kick me or shove me into lockers in front of my peers. Since I was always taught to follow the law and rules, I never responded with violence because I thought that he would get his just desserts from the school admin. When my parents complained to the school administration, rather than doing the sensible thing and punishing the little crap, the principal called us both into the office and tried to pin the blame 50-50 on me and him. And that's when the crocodile tears began to flow, and from that evil brat, as a lot of things he did to me, he began to claim as me being done to him. In the end, he got off scot-free, and I got a 30-minute detention. I never trusted school staff after that. Story 6. In first grade, my best friend and I were horsing around, and as we were lining up to go outside to get picked up by our parents, he whacked me in the forehead with his lunchbox, and it started to bleed. I went to my teacher and told her I fell, and when she saw me bleeding, she freaked out, grabbed me by the hand, and practically dragged me outside, where she hopped around looking for my mom's car. 
Got some stitches out of it and a bad butt scar that eventually healed over as I aged. In third grade, I got sent to the principal's office three times in one day. Was not a good feeling waiting to go home. Story 7. I call my teacher Mom. I then tried to correct myself and referred to her as the names of several other teachers before shutting up and trying to phase into my chair. Once in fourth grade, I told the teacher I had to use the potty instead of the bathroom. Luckily, no one heard me because it was during a speech. Oh, oh, oh the awkwardness. It hurts so bad. And yet, you might have called your teacher mom and then tried to make it look like an accident or whatever. But were you ever leaving the classroom, like, for the day? And your teacher's like, like, you know, oh, but, you know, bye. We'll see you tomorrow. And you're like, yeah, bye. Love you. Story 8. I was bullied a lot and also had a bad haircut. One day in class, all of us students were sitting in a line while the teacher spoke. Halfway through, the teacher stopped talking. He walked up to me and pulled on my hair, saying, Is this for real? He then erupted with laughter, and so did the rest of my class. As they all laughed at me, I felt mortified. I wanted to die. Story 9. I was running around the playground and saw a couple of girls with a small milk carton between them. Ran through and kicked it. Turns out they had a pet hamster or squirrel in it. I killed the pet right in front of them. I felt bad about that for my whole life, and I am now 54. My father did that. I had just gotten a hamster, and it was rolling around in one of those balls while we put the cage together. He came home from work and thought I got a sports ball or something and happily kicked it at me. I, uh, got a new hamster. Story 10. In second grade, we sat at desks arranged in groups of four with two pairs of desks facing each other. I was grasping the front edge of my desk, and this kid slammed his desk against my fingers. Not sure if it was intentional, but it hurt. I started crying. The teacher noticed, and instead of dealing with the situation in a sane way befitting a second grade teacher, her punishment was for the boy to have me slam my desk against his fingers. I told her it was okay because what the F? I really didn't want to do that, but she made me do it anyway. She was a terrible teacher. Good lord, real Old Testament eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth kind of teacher. Was that Old Testament? Now I'm thinking it might have been New Testament. I don't know, but uh, that's not how you teach anyone a lesson. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's abuse. I laugh about it because it's just that absurd that that teacher thought that was the way to go about things. Story 11. Pooped my pants in kindergarten. Then I stepped on it. Then I proceeded to walk around the classroom. When asked if I did it, I denied the act even though the footprints led to me and my pants smelled pretty bad. Got sent home. Many of those kids probably don't remember, but some nights I lay in bed thinking what might have been if I just went to the bathroom. <sighs> well, time to go into the old mainly facts office where we've got the little board that says this many days since last poop story. Time to put that number back to zero. Never seems to get to the double digits. Story 12. I got really sick once. My mother sent me to school despite the fact that I felt awful. I walked into the bathroom, threw up on the floor, and then proceeded to crap my pants. I locked myself in a stall until the teacher came, cleaned me up, and brought me to the nurse. Story 13. Had a teacher tell me I was a slacker when all I wanted to do was mind my own business. She constantly took me out into the hall because I wasn't talking as much as I should and lectured me about how I was disturbing everyone else. Even had my parents come in at one point. Sorry I was a quiet kid, lady. Story 14. I was trapped by a bully after school. His mates sat on me whilst the bully slowly and methodically broke all eight fingers. This was in third grade. Um, that's like beyond school bully and a little more psychopath. What is the most disrespectful thing a guest ever did at your home? Ah, <sighs> you know, I love having house guests over, so long as they're not awful. Um... Worst one I've ever had was, uh, 
We had someone who uh, stayed with us when they were trying to find a new place to live. And all the love to them, and I know that's a difficult time, but when you're sleeping in our living room, but you decide to stay up all night and then sleep most of the day and be upset if we make any noise in the one communal room in our house that isn't the kitchen, wasn't the best. I still love you, man. Story one. My sister-in-law came to stay with my wife and I for a while until she found a job and a place to live. We were in our second year of marriage and money was extremely tight. My wife and I decided to splurge one night and order Pizza Hut. Maybe had pizza twice a year. Asked sister-in-law if she wanted anything on it or if there was anything she really didn't want on it. She said she was good with whatever. We ordered a Supreme. We got the pizza and she grabbed a couple pieces and went to watch TV. A few minutes later, she came back out and threw something in the trash and grabbed a couple more slices. She walked into the kitchen and put something in the trash can and went back to the TV. I walked into the kitchen to grab more water and saw piled toppings in the trash. I asked her, why did you throw out all of your toppings? She responded, I only like the bread. I was fuming. I knew I wouldn't like her next response, but I asked her, why wouldn't you ask wife or I if we wanted your toppings if you were just going to throw them out? I almost lost it when she replied, they were my toppings. I can do what I want with them. Too many stories from this one to share, but I will say this, that six months she stayed with us almost destroyed my marriage. Folks, it is hard enough to find a roommate or a partner, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, that you can tolerate living with. That is one of the hardest things to do. And when you find someone that you love and you want to live with them, there are hurdles to get over. There's learning your different quirks and stuff. And then having someone that you don't have that connection with stay with you for an extended period of time, it is never a great idea. Avoid it if you can. Story two. My ex-boyfriend's 23-year-old sister, 24-year-old, came to a party super late at my home. She refused to drive and made my boyfriend drive her, so they were both really late. This was kind of the introduction to him meeting my friends. She walks in, asked what we're eating, stating she was hungry. I went all out cooking for this. I was pretty excited and made a bunch of appetizer type items, meatballs, loaded potato skins, wings, etc. She slowly looked over everything, looks at my boyfriend and goes, yeah, I'm not eating any of this. Let's go to Wendy's. I was like, are you serious? But he just sheepdogged along behind her. They left, went and got Wendy's, and came back. She crap-talked my friends to them and judged the choice of college degrees and just acted generally condescending. Needless to say, my friends were not fans of my boyfriend or his sister. I gotta say, I'm not a huge fan either. That's really rude. And also, just, look, I like Wendy's. Don't get me wrong, as far as, like the older fast food chains that have been around for a while, Wendy's is way better than friggin' McDonald's, I'll tell you that much. But you may, I mean, meatballs, loaded potato skins, wings. Who is this person? You, if The moment that they left to go get Wendy's, you should have locked the door and been like, pretend we're not home when they come back. Story three. Stole my jacket to walk home with because he was cold. They denied ever taking it and threw it away to save face. F you, Dean. My ex-daughter did that to me. It was a really cool dressy jacket that she asked to borrow and I said no. Never saw it again and haven't been able to find one to replace it either. Story 4. A lot of my friends are artists, and so one thing we often do when together is draw or paint. One friend of mine noticed my new paint set and asked if they could use it. Assuming they would be respectful and clean the brushes after I agreed to let them, however, they never did, and I had to get brand new brushes later that week. Story 5. Over the course of three days, they drank two one-liter bottles of regular mead, two liters of the expensive stuff, four bottles of wine, a bottle of spiced rum, a flask of vodka, and a bottle of tequila. Three days. Jesus effing Christ. I had to check twice. I was angry, but also morbidly fascinated that someone could do this to their body and still appear sober enough to not rouse any suspicion.
Edits. One, L for leader, not it. Two, this is one single person, and he put most of the bottles back after he finished them. We had offered him some rum on the first evening, and we watched him drink a tall glass of it like most would drink apple juice. The amount he drank would have lasted us a year or longer. That's a lot. Like, I used to drink a bit more in my early days, but I'm pretty sure if I drank that amount in that many days, I'd be dead. And I've known friends who could put away a lot, and that would, like, blow my mind for them. I think, I think your friend might have a problem. Story six, my sister's friend kicked my cat because she doesn't like cats. I slapped the crap out of her and have no regrets. Story seven, they invited another distant family member to our Christmas gift exchange, then didn't plan to show up themselves. One, we wouldn't have a gift for the person. Two, they had been specifically told that the parents in the group didn't want this person near their kids. Three, the person had pending charges for S assault of a minor. What? What? How? What is wrong with people? Look, I... No, I, I... I can't wrap my mind around this person and what they're doing. This is too much. Don't... Boy, if you're going to invite a distant relative to a party you're going to, especially a Christmas gift exchange, there's got to be some unspoken rules that you just have to know in your head and follow, and you broke... You, you just broke them all. Story 8. My brother-in-law left a vial of PCP on the couch where any of my kids could have easily picked it up. Then he had the audacity to ask my wife if we found it and told her he wanted it back. Story 9. Tried to F in my bedroom. Went back to my room for my smokes in the middle of our end of semester house party to find these two making out heavily on my bed, partially undressed. I didn't know who they were, and neither did anyone else at our party, so we kicked them the F out. Story 10. Not my home, but leaving trash in my car. I effing hate it when people do that. Only my trash is allowed in my car. Don't add to it. Story 11. My brother-in-law didn't feel like watching his sick child during his last stay. Well, just as expected, his kid diarrheaed all over our wool carpet. He didn't apologize or offer to get it cleaned. After finding out the cost to clean it would be half the cost of its purchase price, I decided to throw the carpet out. I, you know, it's always got to be a poop story. Um, at the very least, I do appreciate the um <laughs> the verbing of diarrhea to diarrhea uh i don't know why but that always gets a chuckle out of me then i think about diarrhea in a wool carpet and uh and the chuckles die story 12 when i was a teenager my parents had a dinner party an infamous guest at the table crapped his pants went to the bathroom and left the soiled underwear by the sink Went back to the table and carried on drinking. Alex, you came to yours too? Story 13. The worst offenders in my friendship group are two who infamously overstay their welcome. They generally stay over when they come round, and if I didn't make an excuse about having to go out, they'd probably stay until the next evening. I had a group like that, three of them. They're harmless and well-meaning, and I just smile and cheerfully tell them it's time for them to go. Nope, you can't hang while I sleep. Nope, I don't have anything pressing. I'm just done having company. See y'all next time. Oh, you know, I am, like, both an introvert and extrovert. I love socializing with my friends. I would have my friends over all the time. I adore it. But the moment that my little social battery is at its end, it's done. You need to go, or I need to go. Someone has to leave. And I've literally had times where friends have been, like, staying at my place well after I was done. And I've considered leaving. I've considered just going, I, uh, I have to go run some errands. You guys, you can just stay here, I guess. Because I just have to go.
What are some things that sound like compliments but are actually insults? Aw, oh, man, I wouldn't know anything about compliments that come across as pretty insulting. Definitely, when I started showing my face, didn't get a bunch of you like, Man, from your voice, I expected you to be a lot heavier with greasy hair. Uh, that, uh, that felt great. Though a lot of you have also been super nice, so I'm fine. Story one. When I used to be in an active band in the area, we would play shows with a bunch of different bands. Some great, some good, some terrible. You never want to be a D to anyone or tell someone they sucked, so our go-to comment to bands we just really didn't enjoy was to say, you guys really were together out there. Sounds like they were playing well as one cohesive unit, but in reality, we just meant that they were literally together up there, because that's the closest thing to an honest, nice comment we could make. Oh, man. That would be pretty disheartening to find out if you were in the other band. Like, oh boy, you sure all were standing on that stage near each other. You sure did produce sound at the same time as one another. And, uh... And people heard it. Wow. The, the people heard it. And they they witnessed your togetherness. Way to go. Story two. You were so pretty as a child. Oof, this, hit, this hits home. My mom has this joke that she thinks is hilarious. Whenever we happen to see an old photo of me when I was a kid, she, without fail, will say, You used to be so cute. What happened? every time. Literally cracks herself up with it, too. Uh, if I show I don't think it's funny, she'll do the arm slap thing. Oh, come on, you know I'm just joking. What happened to your sense of humor? What happened to my sense of humor, Mom? Why, apparently it died away with my cuteness! Story 3. When my art teacher said, great effort, there was a girl with mild cerebral palsy in my art class in high school, and the teacher stood behind her as she drew for a while and said, wow, your self-portrait may actually turn out to be all right. There was a very awkward tension in the room after that. Story 4. Wow, I'm so impressed. I didn't think you were capable of that. Respond with, wow, you're much more aware than everyone else tells me. Story 5. I heard when the seventh episode of Star Wars came out, George Lucas gave a fairly backhanded compliment to the movie. The public will love it. Yeah, George, I would sure hate it if people liked a Star Wars movie. <laughs> I don't have super strong feelings about Star Wars, but I gotta put a little jab in there. Come on, George, those prequels... All these little apologists on the internet in the last couple years, they haven't convinced me. Those movies were bad. Shame on you. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.